All right, everybody, welcome back. Uh, on the last video, we talked about getting the T56 in the car, or at least getting all the parts down. So I did get all the parts down for the trans, and I have a way that I can uh, kind of um, cheat a little bit to see if this thing's gonna fit. So basically the T56 is the bell housing, the front plate, uh, there's like a mid section, and then the tail, tail housing. So I have bolted all of those together without any of the parts all the parts are scattered amongst the the table here so um i'll be able to like push that up there and see where i got a cut um so i got that going i'm gonna work in the shop for a few hours and then uh go out to merle's and show him uh the video of how this thing went in and that it went in no problem other than the starter i got to massage that a little bit the starter hole so that's what we're gonna do somewhere in the years that my mom bought parts and having this card and that card and building shops and whatnot i can't find the synchros <laughs> that my mom bought so <clears throat> i gotta do some figuring and see what i'm gonna do there um this is not gonna be the transmission that stays in the car forever uh, like i said before i want to tick performance transmission with their billet front plate and the oil sprayer and all that. But that ain't gonna happen at the hit when this car comes out. That transmission's like 8,000 bucks. So this one's gonna have to do for now. And then once I can get the money saved up to get that trans, this will become the backup trans. And I will just have this in a little drag week trailer and I'll be able to use this if that other one breaks. Um, so. With that said, I'm gonna put you on time lapse. I'm gonna cut the front. I had already cut a little hole in the front uh, header or radiator panel. I'll show you here. So I started like kind of cutting this out so I could get the turbo set over here. And basically I'm just gonna cut out where they've stamped this big piece here. Now I will leave this. It looks like this car, like if you look at the grill and then you look at some of these indentations, it looks like somebody maybe hit here, ran into like a parking pole or something like that. So that's kind of dicked up a little bit, but that's okay. Um, no big deal, it's just a race car. So before I go to Merle's, I'm gonna cut that out. Um, I may make a stand. I see a lot of people will take like a, a stand and make a stand to put the turbo on and hold it from like the oil area. And then they'll put it on like a something that can go up and down where they can position it kind of where they want it. I may build something like that just so I have an idea of kind of where I want the turbo and then how much, <clears throat> excuse me, how wide I need a radiator. I want to get the biggest radiator in this car that I can. So I'm going to do that and probably massage that starter hole. I may weld the rear stands on for the, for the mid plate. I haven't done that yet. Um, there's just endless work that needs to be done here. So, Time lapse it is. Let me show you this T56 parts. I've literally took this thing apart so many years ago that it's gonna be a, a task to get it all back together. But uh, basically the reason it came apart or why I took it apart is like some of these sliders kind of chewed up. So I'm gonna go through through here and I may even call like Liberty and see if what it would be to faceplate um, one, two, three, and four. Um, this slider doesn't look too bad. That side looks really good, but this side's just a little bit, not so bad. I've seen T5s that are a lot worse. So that's why it's a part. I never broke the trans. There's no, there's no real signs of abuse. These things are pretty tough. Um, I thought one of these was broke or cracked, but it's been so long you can't remember. So at any rate, I'm going to put you on a time lapse and, and just work. Sorry for kind of the, uh, boring stuff, but that's what it takes to build a car. You just got to get out and put in the work and work and work and work and work until you get where you want to be. So...
Got that done, got that cut out. Leaves an area for a big radiator, which is what this little car is gonna need. Cruising down the road at 80, pulling a trailer with a big old freaking turbo. It's gonna need a lot of radiators, so. That gives us a ton of cooling area where it can go in there. All right, I am building a little stand. I can like bolt the turbo to and position it where I want. Let me show you what I did. Of course, I need to weld all this up, but this is just an old brake drum from my folks. I'm gonna put that in there. I'm gonna have a little nut here with a handle and then there'll be something on the inside that'll go up and down on the turbo. So time lapse it is, I'm gonna just MIG weld this up. you guys it's uh sunday the 27th i think of february or something like that towards the end of the month and i got that little stand for the turbo built kind of got it up in the car where i think i want it to be and i i didn't film any of that and um not gonna be able to do any of that hot side stuff i don't think until i get the cylinder heads i'm gonna run i think i'm gonna do the afr 220s and they raise the exhaust port it says raised 375 thousandths. Um, I think the 185s also said the same thing on my Fox, but I didn't notice any difference with the header fitment or exhaust fitment. So um, I had all, I put a picture of where I think the turbo is going to go, but that'll probably honestly is going to not even matter until the car comes back from the cage. But what I'm going to get working on now is. Um, I'm gonna show you, I'm, I've already lifted the transmission in there. It doesn't fit, it will hit. But before I start cutting the floor out of it to make it fit, I'm gonna move back to the rear end. I'm gonna get the um, rear end out of this thing. I'm gonna drag the Fox rear end out from the backyard that I got. Um, that's the one I'm gonna use. I was gonna do an Explorer one, but I think once the Fox one's all braced up, it, it should be okay. But I'm gonna get the rear end out. Um, I ordered the Funkhauser kit that's for a Chevy 2, but I think I, it comes unwelded and I think I can make that work on the Falcon. Um, so I'm gonna get the rear end out. I'm gonna strap the car to the, to the lift just in case and then get the rear end out, get all that stuff drug out and start back here. And the plan is once I get the Funkhauser stuff in the front, I'm gonna run subframe connectors to the front then I'll cut the uh, transmission tunnel out. But I want to make sure that the subframes are in. This little car, it moves a lot when you start taking metal out. And I want to make sure it's as strong as I can before I take that center hump out. I may even run a bar across when I cut this thing just to, so it ain't trying to freaking buckle. Um, but that's the plan. We're going to move to the rear end, get that stuff out, and get all that done. At least get the subframe connectors in, and then we can go back to the transmission. And then quite honestly, once the car goes to the um, chassis place for the cage, I, then I may work, start working on putting the trans back together. I thought about calling Liberty and seeing how much it'd be to faceplate the parts that I have for first, second, third, and fourth. Um, so I'll, I'll do that next week and just see. Uh, but we'll get going on the rear part of this. Right, so we are kind of working our way from the front to the back, but... I th it makes more sense to me after thinking over and over and over. Let's just get the stuff back here done, subframes in, and then we'll start cutting out the tunnel and, and all that stuff. So put you on a time lapse and get cranking. All right, you guys, before I put the time lapse on, basically I showed you before, I just put the T56, the case pieces together. <laughs> just the case of this thing is like as heavy as a T5. But as you can see, Definitely isn't gonna go in uh, back here. That definitely has to come out, this piece. And then it's gonna be tremendously close, especially up there. Um, 
trying to get this in. So firewall or tunnels definitely have to be trimmed. out eventually that's gonna come out I don't need that I don't think I'm gonna need the pinion snubber either if I do I can remake something there but I'm gonna pull all that stuff out I'm gonna get these leaf springs out and uh, pretty basic stuff here I've got them all sprayed and soaked so hopefully they'll come out easily All right, you guys, I'm just under here getting dirty, trying to take where the shock, that cross member is for the shocks, trying to get that out. Not really time lapsing it because it's kind of boring. Find all the spot welds, get the spot weld cutter, cut it and get it out. Plus it's greasier than crap under here. So I'm just trying to bang this out as fast as I can. But I've noticed this little hump right here is gonna have to come out. Once the NI roll bar and all that stuff's in here, this is gonna be in the way. So I'm gonna lower the car, mark it from the top and cut it out and then I'll have to make another panel later. I'm gonna be keeping the stock style gas tank in this car, so I wanna keep this flange in there with the tank. All right, I got this piece out and I'm gonna make a little piece and get it right back in here before I do anything else because that is super flimsy and that's for the gas tank bolts. I'm just gonna do a flat panel all the way across so that that hump isn't down there and easy peasy. I'll get it tacked in and then we'll keep going. the one piece cut out that I'm going to use. I don't have a metal brake, so I'm going to have to, I've got this thing clamped to my bench and I'm just going to slowly hit it with a, I think a rubber mallet and get the little bend that I need to get into it. I'll just keep test fitting it until I get it right. <clears throat> but uh, once I'm done bending this, I'll show you what I'm doing actually. So I just got it clamped to the bench and then I'll hit it here all the way down as best I can it ain't got to be perfect but I'll get it pretty close get it in the car and uh, get it welded back in <laughs> Alright, so that bin's decent. Uh, I might leave it and just tack, get it tacked because once I do that, it, it's going to strengthen this up where I've cut all this out. And then what I'll do is I'll, I'll tack up here and then I'll just take them out and lay that down. And then when this car finally goes back together, we'll seam seal it all and that'll be that. Thank you. 
all banged out, I've, I'm basically gonna plug weld this. So I drilled a bunch of holes and I'm going to I get this thing where I want it, get a couple tacks going and then I'll just burn it in. All right, I got it all clamped in where I want it. I put a couple of self-tacking screws just to keep it uh, where I want it in the top, but I'll get some tacks going and then you know, away I'll go. Just putting them all in. guys that's that i did not weld that hole because that's where one of the screws went down to hold the gas tank in so i just left it but uh we'll run it up on the lift and see what it looks like from the underside quite the mess down there So that's what we look like underneath now. We ain't got that basically big hump laying in here. So that'll give us some room for uh, anti-roll bars and shock mounts and all that. Still working on getting that thing out, which I'll probably pick up tomorrow working on that. <laughs> All right, you guys, it's Monday, February 28th. Uh, happy birthday to my homie Jason. It's his birthday, he's a leap year baby, but today's his birthday. As you can see, I'm trying to get out this uh, area where the rear shocks went. The shocks aren't gonna go there anymore. They're gonna go somewhere else. Um, so I wanted to get that out, I'm trying to make as much room in here as possible, like I said already, for the NA roll bar and stuff. And this little freaking piece, <laughs> Is a SOB to get out. It does not want to come out easily. But as you've seen on the time lapse, I'm just trying to truck away. Kind of boring. So I think I'm going to shut the camera off and just get the rest of it out. It's greasy as heck under here. I think the rain was leaking the pinion seal. And there's just grease everywhere. Um, I don't really want to get that stuff wet and turn it into a big greasy mess on the floor. Because right now it's greasy, but it's old, dried up crap. And it's kind of easy to sweep up. Uh, I ordered the Funkhauser um, leaf spring relocation kit. It's actually for a Nova 2, but I think I can make it work. Uh, the only concern I have is depend on where the stock, where, depend on where the sliders end up and the stock gas tank. I may have to. Um, I, I was think I was going to do like a Rhodes gas tank because it's aluminum and it holds more fuel. And obviously, this is a drag and drive car. Um, may have to modify that sucker so that uh, the leaves and the sliders uh, will clear and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So what I'm talking about is here, that's where, you know, somewhere the slider is gonna be here and then the spring is gonna go down there. Um, talking to a couple of people, it looks like they just went off of here and, and ran a leaf spring parallel to this up and back to the slider. And I think that's what I'm gonna do as well. And then the frame's gotta be cut about halfway all the way so that we can get uh, the tire that we have in here. 
So with that being said, um, once I get the Funkhauser stuff, I'm, I'm supposed to go to Cal Calvert Racing on Thursday to pick up the spring. So once I, hopefully I have the, the um, Funkhauser stuff and I can kind of get an idea of this gas tank deal. Um, I guess if I lose a few gallons, that's all right. Especially if I'm buying the Rose one. I know Aeromotive makes a tank too, but I think it's just a factory um, 12 gallon or however many gallon it is. And uh, when you're driving a long way, especially this car is gonna be E85, you need as much fuel in it as you can get. So probably still do the bigger tank and just modify it if I need to. What up, what up? It is uh, Tuesday, March 1st. So, um, dang, this video is starting to be long just because of all the crap you gotta do to get the rent and all that stuff out. So, um, like I had already said, not gonna do anything with the tunnel until I get all the rear stuff put back together uh, and I can get subframes in. And I'm not putting subframes in until I can set the car down and have its weight on the ground and then I'll weld the subframes in. Um, I'm gonna start pulling out some of these panels on the inside so that I can cut the wheel tubs. So that panel and that panel need to come out so that I can split the wheel tub and then I'm just gonna cut it at the bottom right there on both sides so that it can come in and then it'll get re-welded and a strip will go inside the wheel well. So sorry, this is kind of a boring video. Not a whole lot of excitement going on. In the next video, uh, I should have my stuff from Funkhauser and I'm taking a trip over to Calvert and I'll get this the monoliths and all that from Calvert. Um, plan on doing that Thursday. That's my day off. Uh, I ordered a tunnel that's supposed to fit a T56 from Hearst and it's uh, from Summit. So I'll address that when the time comes, what I'm gonna do there as far as fabrication, you guys will see all of it. But I guess my main focus is to get these two panels out and basically get this thing ready for the mini tub or start that mini tub process. As you've seen in the time lapse, that freaking shock um, area where the shocks used to go through, pain in the butt, man. Um, pain in the butt to get all that stuff out. There's some holes that are gonna have to be welded back up. No big deal. Uh, I yanked the rear end out from the back of my backyard. Uh, it's an 8.8, the original 8.8 out of my black car. Um, a while back I had bought one and had the gears and all that put in and then I just swapped them. So that rear end, I'll show it to you. It's been in my backyard ever since then. And um, you know, the whole thing's gotta come apart. But it's just your regular old 88 out of a 91 Mustang. And on this video, I will, I'm will i going to cut these off. I don't need those. Those are obviously because it's a four-lane car. And then all this stuff needs to come off. I'm going to cut all that stuff off. Um, I'll probably leave the backing plates and everything the way that it is, like it is. And I'll take it and get it sandblasted that way. Um, then I can pull all the guts out of it. I may even spray it down with a little bit of steel it. But the whole rear is going to be cut down with 9 inch ends and all that stuff. But at least it'll be clean. I hate greasy stuff. But it'll be clean for that process. So I'm just going to throw you guys on a time lapse for the for these this next part that I'm getting ready to do here. We got the first one out. I was just gonna cut it, but when I seen uh, how many small little spot welds there were, I decided I'll just I'm spot weld the damn thing. A uh, little rust hole here at the bottom I'm gonna have to deal with right there. But my plan is to cut this tub right on this line right here, all the way back. And that's how I'll split the tub. All right, you guys, now I'm going to untack weld 
this or spot weld it from the tub. That way once the tub comes out, um, I can probably just cut it off and then re-weld it in. I took the hinge out and I think I'm gonna change the way I cut. I think I'm just gonna pull a string line from here. And then go even with this. It looks like it'll be a straighter cut because these seams on these tubs kick out. If you see in there, they kind of look like they're going that way and that way. So that should get me a little straighter. Alright you guys, uh, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I ain't going to film it. You already seen that one. But uh, once, once that's done, I'll get both of these things cut out. And then I'm waiting for the Funkhauser stuff and the Caltrack stuff so I can get it mocked up. Um, I am going to cut the frame in half so I can get this big tire in here. But uh, before I do any of that cutting on that frame, I want to weld some stuff to the backside just to keep it... Uh, strong and then we'll go from there so that'll do it for this video catch up with me on the next one uh and that'll show the funkhauser stuff and go into calvert and all that so thanks for watching please uh like comment and subscribe and if you're looking for any merch check out my website www.teamdperformance.com